Welcome to episode 17. This is Cougars on Cougars. I'm Jess. This is Mary. Yes, hi. So we wanted to introduce ourselves a little bit since we just joined with Vanquish the Foe. Yes, we're so, really excited about being here. Yeah, we are. So you'll find our episodes on vanquishthefoe.com every week now. Mm-hmm. And you may see some written content from us there from time to time. Mm-hmm. So, But we are a YouTube channel. We post every week on Tuesdays. And we talk about all things BRU sports, mainly football and basketball. But, yeah, mainly football and basketball. But we'll talk about a lot of stuff. Um, so. And we are we do some of the X's and O's. Uh, one of our segments is coaching from the couch, where we point out some things that went right and wrong in the games. And uh, we do some X's and O segment, but we also do things uh, like we have a quote every week that we're going to get to. In a second here, we do a segment called Talk of the Town, where we catch you up on It's kind of like a social media roundup of sorts. So... Mm-hmm. And we do interviews with people you wouldn't normally mm-hmm. see an interview with. Mm-hmm. So we've interviewed some players' moms. Yeah, Kyle Davis' mom sisters. and TJ's mom. And yep. So Kodak you'll see some sister. different stuff from us than you wouldn't see anywhere else. Yes. So to our new viewers, we are happy to have you. And uh, we hope that you enjoy the show. So we are going to get right into it. Like we said, we always have a quote of the week. And this one comes from Lavelle Edwards, the beloved Lavelle Edwards. And he said, we can have the greatest will to do well, but unless we have prepared, it is of little use. Really, it should be the will to prepare instead of the will to win. So it's the off season. What do you do in the off season? You prepare. Prepare. So hard. Okay, we are starting a new segment, and this is going to be called Cougs and Culture. Because Jess and I uh, are huge fans of pop culture. Mr. Welch, who is joining us from the Los Angeles area, is also a pop culture aficionado. We are dubbing him that. That's great. <laughs> Welcome, I will take that Jake. title gladly. Yeah, that's great. I didn't know that I was a pop culture aficionado, but I will, I'll take it. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for coming on. So Jake's Twitter handle is at BYU All Blue, and he is a contributor, one of the best contributors, in our opinion, for Vanquish the Foe, which we are now a part of. So this is yeah. just one big Vanquish the Foe party right here. That's right. Welcome to the family. That's what thank this you. is. Thank you. welcome party. <laughs> so being part of Vanquish the Foe, you guys are always up on the latest news. So why don't you mm-hmm. quickly give us what's the latest Big 12 update? Like really quickly. Very quickly. Uh, good heavens. I mean, there's so much to talk about, but really simple. There's a meeting last week between the Big 12 like commissioners, essentially, like the commissioners, athletic directors, coaches. They all met together, went over some research that said expansion would be good. This is probably a good idea. And now they're all debating, well, what should we do? Uh, yesterday, it said in like the, somewhere in Oklahoma, like some news report came out saying that uh, like the athletic director and the board of regents and the and the university president were all like arguing about it and like no one could agree. And then this morning, some uh, the West Virginia athletic director said it's going to be between 90 and 100 days before a decision is made. So it's just like a bunch of nothing at this point. Like no one knows anything concrete or any details. So it's just like bloggers like me that are making up stuff. <laughs> Same so, old. So and it makes a lot of fun. Oh. So one of the things we want to ask you about, Jake, is that you ran a series on Vanquish the Foe called the Dead Season Series. That helped them to you this tell segment. Us, <laughs> tell us what that is and sort of what some of the pieces you've done for that are. Yes. Yeah, so around last year, uh, basketball season was wrapping up, and we were, like, in the middle of the month in June, and there's just no BYU news. Like, nothing is happening in the college football or basketball world. I mean, other sports are happening and stuff, but, like, nothing that exciting is going on. And so I remember going to the editors at Vanquish the Phone, and I was just like, I want to start a series of, like, completely nonsensical things, like, kind of making fun of these news articles that some of these, like, publications, like, real newspapers and stuff make. It's it's nice because it's, I get to choose exactly what I get, you know, what I want to write, and it's just a lot of fun, so. Yeah, sports fans, I feel like, always take things so seriously. It's always, like, life or death if your team loses. So, at least in our opinion, we're not that kind of show. We don't like to take things too seriously. And it's really nice to have kind of the off season to decompress and to talk about these silly things that don't matter at all and have hardly any relevance. So, <laughs> yeah, if you haven't read any of those, go back on Vanquish the Foe and find those. Like we said, we are introducing this new segment. This is going to be Cougs and Culture. This one is a little light on the culture and uh, heavy on the Cougs, which is fine. Um, but we're going to uh, play kind of just a, Jake, why don't you explain it? 
Yeah, so, like, anytime I'm looking for a dead season piece, I kind of, like, think about questions or kind of, like, nonsensical things that I would ask myself and, like, what are the best responses I could come up with? And I figure since I'm going to be on the show, I would ask the two of you some of these questions. This, these are going to be questions that decide if you want to have Tanner Mangum or Taysom Hill. Like, this is a this has been hotly <laughs> debated, you know, their quarterbacking skills, if it's, you know, I want someone who's the more pure passer, if I want someone who can run and be more agile or... You know, maybe someone who's going to build the future for BYU. And so there's been so many hot takes, internet hot takes for days on the BYU blogosphere about which one BYU should start. But we're going to decide the winner based off of these very logical and important questions. So the first one is this. Let's do it. We'll try to put our Uh, biases aside. I think we do stand on different sides of this actual debate. Okay. Well, I'm the one. I'm going to decide the winner at the end of this. So. so. Okay. Oh, dear. Based off of your guys' comments. Okay. So both of these guys are from Idaho. Uh, you decide that you want to take a, a nice visit to the, the Granite State. Is that what it is? I don't know. But it's the, the, the it? state of potatoes. And you're like, you know, what? I want to see the beautiful yep. state of Idaho. I want to see it in all of its grandeur. Um, and you have to decide between Tanner Mangum or Taysom Hill as your tour guide, since both of them uh, hail from that state. Who do you choose? This is so easy for me. I don't know if you know this, but I went to Eagle High School. <laughs> I'm from Boise. <laughs> Rigged! It's rigged! <laughs> well, what would you say? You've never been here. Tanner. Either. Well, of course you'd say Tanner. <laughs> I no, thought I, I tried to, to put my Tanner, bias though. to the side. You were going to say Tanner? You have to, because oh. have you seen Pocatello? Um, oh, is, that <laughs> is it Whoa. that? Are you, are you sure you want to, uh, you know, throw your, your viewers of Pocatello under the bus here? They're going to be really <laughs> You're about to get some hate mail. Come on. <laughs> yeah. As this is the most I have anyone family can talk bad about Idaho, though. and I think they might agree with me. I think Tanner would be a more fun tour guide, though. If you're going between Pocatello and Boise, though, you have to pick Boise. She's from Boise. This is rigged. This question doesn't count. <laughs> so okay, all right. So both of you are saying Tanner. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. Next question here. Uh, so T- uh, Taysom Hill is married to Emily Nixon, who's obviously related to BYU former BYU linebacker David Nixon, and Tanner is engaged to BYU volleyball star Alexa Gray. Mm -hmm. Who is more likely, or which family, is more likely to have the more athletic children? Oh, man. Tanexa. Oh, I disagree. Tesa. They don't have a couple. We got, what's a couple name for them? I don't know, but. We'll think of that later. Have you seen Tesa, though? (laughs) Combine that with the Nixon? yeah. I I guess I just thought that since Alexa is more athletic, you've just got more athleticism, period. But Taysom is kind of like he's freak super of nature, human. Yeah. so yeah. And I'm sure his wife is athletic too. Oh, I'm sure she is. She's super tall. But have you seen Alexa with those kills, man? No, I have. But, yeah, yeah, that's, that's a true. tough one. <laughs> this is the great, this is the great thing about this question. I remember I thinking myself, like my both my parents, like my dad was had a scholarship to BYU to be a running back until he hurt his knee. And my mom runs marathons. So I was like, that's perfect. I will be the ultimate athletic <laughs> specimen. And sure enough, like I got neither of my parents athletic abilities. I still played oh, ball in high school, but I was terrible. So <laughs> that's not that. It's the best. So you never know. Happens. Maybe, so maybe all of their children will want to be like chess champions or like you being the probably school. knock on some wood. You're going to get hate mail now. <laughs> that's, you know what? I get enough hate mail as it is. That, uh, last three questions here. Oh, this is my favorite one. Uh, you're a student at, you're currently a student at BYU, and it's the time for your big organic chemistry final. It's your uh, big final. Why am I and uh, the day of the final, you break both of your legs, and you're just completely incapacitated. You're not able to make it, and your teacher has a very strict uh, no delay, no late uh, taking of tests, regardless of the situation, no matter what. And uh, Tanner or Taysom has offered up to take the test for you because they're good people. Yes. And so they're going to take the test, you know, in your stead. So who would you rather take the test for you, Tanner or Taysom? I thought about it long and hard. I think Tanner is more with the words and Taysom is more with the left brain from my very professional and good assessment. Do we know what like, Tanner Mangum's major is, though? Because Taysom's study, he's more of a his, in business acumen. Business and finance. Well, but that's what I'm thinking. He knows, like, the numbers. I don't know. Is OCHEM numbers? Chemistry. Organic chemistry? <laughs> no. It's, it's pretty sure. I've already <laughs> failed the test. I feel like either of them would do better than I would have. <laughs> so. What is Tanner's major? Do you know? 
I have no idea what his major is. But he, like, likes the quotes and the poetry. I feel like he's got more of the right brain stigma. I feel it. He quotes and poetry. Have you been reading his Twitter account? Doesn't yes, he, just quote, he like, quoted first... Maya Angelou the other day. Taysom doesn't do that. Taysom, well, Taysom never... doesn't tweet in general. Taysom is just like, thanks, Cougar Nation. He's studying. He's too busy studying, okay, so he should take the test. Okay. So Taysom, yeah. yeah. Perfect. Okay, next question. Uh, you're... you're... You're the president of the PTA at your school, your local elementary school, and uh, you're in charge of the Bake Off this year, or the Bake Sale, and you need to make a ton of money to raise money for the giant jumbotron that's going on this, the uh, the football field, Obviously. just like in uh, Friday Night Lights. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you need your you need someone to be in charge of the cookies, and you need them to make the best cookies to make a lot of money. Who do you put in charge of that, Tanner or Taysom? Shoot, I was instinctively going to say Taysom because remember that one picture of him doing the dishes? He's comfortable in the kitchen. I haven't yeah. seen any pictures of Tanner doing the dishes. Not that doing the dishes means you make good cookies. And that's the thing. Maybe doing the dishes means that you're, you know, Ooh. compensating for your lack of ability to make the dishes. But have we seen Tanner in the kitchen at all? Oh, his mom's a good cook. But my mom's a really good cook. And I was, like, that was a big roadblock for me because I never had to learn because she just always made stuff. So, but maybe he's the opposite. I don't know. Maybe he's Tanner like the probably apprentice. knows how to make healthy cookies. Uh, no one wants healthy cookies. No one wants healthy cookies. Yeah, yeah that's terrible. Yeah, <laughs> he's not good. Healthy cookies. I had a gluten-free cookie, and it was the biggest mistake of my entire life. Like, I'm yeah. ne never doing that again. Yeah. Okay. He probably, actually, I know about the Mangum family, that they are very, very healthy because of Karen and her kitchen and her healthy recipes. So I'm going with Taysom basically solely on that. He'd probably put butter and sugar in the cookies, and yeah, hopefully. I vote for that. Yeah, because those people in Pocatello, they love their <laughs> butter and sugar, right? Yeah, we do. <laughs> you gotta right, stay last... hardy during those winters. <laughs> okay, this is the last and, and most important question of all. Okay, so both of you are married, and uh, so for your, for your anniversary of either your engagement or your marriage, your husband surprises you with uh, a wonderful evening of food, entertainment, and fun. The best part is it's a double date with either Tanner and Alexa or Taysom and Emily. Can I <laughs> go not Tanner and Taysom Tanner and leave the, the women at home? <laughs> no way. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry. Why would you say that you want to? Why would I'm you do that? Email. I don't really. I'm I just not, like that like... your husband's sitting on our couch. Over here. <laughs> <laughs> he knows. He knows. So it's three guys and you on this on this on this double date. Yes. That would be an awesome <laughs> double date. And see, I'd probably be like the opposite and take the wives. No. <laughs> Fine, you go okay. with them. I know. Okay, but seriously, though, if we had to split it up, who would you go with? Oh, gosh. I know you're going to say Tanner. Just say it. Tanner. I'd want to go with Taysom and his wife. Any specific reason why? I feel like she likes them. You like Tanner and Alexa, too, though. I also feel like if you were on, going on a double date with Tanner and Alexa right now, they'd be so into each other. No, yeah, like oh engaged. my gosh, wait, I changed my answer. I'm not going anywhere with them. <laughs> Ew, engaged people are the worst. Yeah, see? Okay. okay. I, I would stick go. with Tanner and taste them. I don't know. I'm not changing my answer. Oh, gosh, that's cheating. So just based off of those very scientific list of responses and the information that I received from this, I'm going to say that... Uh, Taysom Hill is going to be our starting quarterback this fall. Yeah, shoot! It's mostly has to do with the butter and sugar cookies. That's that's what it is. He makes the super unhealthy cookies, so that's why he's going to be the starting quarterback. Okay, you heard it here that's first. Good reason is any. On the record, Taysom is starting because of butter and sugar. Love it. We look forward to having you on again to discuss many more very important topics. And can't wait for the next Dead Season article. Yes. I think it's going to be inspired by this conversation. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad. I think it's gonna. I think you you really did a, a nice job of presenting some <laughs> good arguments for me. So because we said some video. really scholarly stuff. So oh boy. Yeah, I'll have to make sure I give you guys partial credit for this one. <laughs> okay. okay. Thanks for coming on, Jake. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you to Jake for joining us. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Oh man. And we look good forward questions. to doing a lot more <laughs> Cougs and Culture segments. Uh, we are going to get into talk of the town now, and we are starting with Mother's Day because we got a lot of really great Mother's Day posts. First one comes from our own Jamal Williams. Mm -hmm. said, happy, happy Mother's Day to my beautiful mother, UCLA grad 90 on Twitter. Thank you for everything you do for me. 
It is an adorable picture of him as a child. Look how cool Jamal looks, even as a little kid. Future so bright, <laughs> he needs shades. Yep. Um, the next one we got was from Mitch Matthews, and he wasn't able to be with his mother on Mother's Day because he is in Kansas City with the Chiefs, who he did sign with. And he, this is a picture of him in the lockers room with some Happy Mother's Day blocks up there, and he's holding a whiteboard that says "Love my mom." So cute. So cute. So sweet. Oh, I love this one. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, we had to get one from Tanner Mangum. He posted a picture Look with his mom. Look at the mom. BYU shirts. I know. How they're cute adorable. are they? She's the cutest, so. Yeah, and his caption was really sweet, and he referred people over to her Instagram to get recipes from her because yeah, she is don't quite follow the it. chef. Inside, Inside Karen's, Karen's Kitchen. kitchen. Yep. On Instagram, we both follow it. <laughs> it's <Yes>. great. <laughs> it's Okay. Um, Eric Mika oh. posted one with his mother. It's a picture of them at the airport. First hug, I'm sure, since he got yeah. home. So cute. Very cute. Our next yeah. one comes from Brig, Elijah Bryant, and uh, he did his famous series of three photos of his mom because yeah, we've go look at his feed. We have established a pattern. He posts three photos that look the same so that if you go to his feed, it's kind of like a... It's nicely organized. Anyway, we don't know. It's a thing, apparently. <laughs> um, but he said, you will forever be my best friend. Thank you for everything. And you've got his cute mom, Israel, quoting um commenting back on that um she's beautiful and we we hope to talk to her sometime soon yeah she seems cool and then we also got one from <laughs> zach Selius, who we only have a couple weeks left one week i think <sighs> but he's he posted a picture i just love my mom and the hair yeah i was just gonna say we saw him with bleach tips a few weeks ago on talk of the town that is mm, bleached boom in <laughs> your face cut bleached all the yeah. bleach Okay, so uh, there's kind of our Mother's Day recap for you. Moving on to some BYU football stuff that we have going on. The Pac-12, man. <laughs> so Athlon Sports put out their regional covers, and their Pac-12 one features Tanner Ringham right on the front. Huh, that's odd, seeing as how we're not in the Pac-12. Yeah, but Utah is. Utah is. And so. we've, I mean, I guess we are their second game, but there you go, Tanner Mangum on this Pac-12 magazine, and... Uh, you know, people were having a fun time with They know that. it's going to sell. But... <laughs> yeah. um, our next one, we have Coach Atuaya, who is with Mitch Matthews in, they must be in Kansas City, but um, Kurt Matthews tweeted this out and said, good to see Coach A showing support of former players. So that is nice. That That's the coach that he, well, he's the running backs coach, but they were on the coaching staff when Mitch played. So nice to see that they're still in touch. And then we had Preston Hadley posted mm -hmm. a picture with Coach 2J, and he said, not mad about having a chance to catch up with the big homie Coach 2J while on the road recruiting. Yeah, so, so it says that they're in L.A., so Preston is now with Weber State, 2J mm -hmm. is now with Virginia, and I went to Bam Bam's on Saturday after the rugby loss, ugh, and mm -hmm. um, who walks in behind us but Coach 2J. So they were in L.A., but then they made their way to Provo. I sure hope he wasn't trying to recruit, <laughs> but who knows? Hmm. Maybe they were just visiting. Um, Jordan Pendleton posted out a yeah. picture of him with the Warner Brothers and Tijon Perlman. And Tijon, he's, so he's there, he's working out, he's wearing a BYU shirt. I know that everyone is so concerned about Tejon and if he's going to play or not, but it it's, can't be a bad sign that he's working out with no, players wearing the gear. I'm sure they're working hard. I'm sure Jordan's not taking it easy on them. So. Yeah. yeah, so it's good to see they're all working out. Um, yeah. Taryn Houck... Jay Drew tweeted this out. So he is going to participate in a mini camp with the 49ers. We said last week that he was um, going to participate in a mini camp with the Bears, but it looks like this one with the 49ers is first. So if they sign him, then he won't be doing that mini camp with the Bears and he will just be on the 49ers. Mm -hmm. um, but that's good for him. Opened, opened options. I'll let you take this one too. Oh, yeah. Bronson Kafusi. Um, the Ravens <laughs> shared a picture of him on Monday, and they said, the young blood, hashtag play like a raven. He looks fierce in that he photo. He looks scary. Uh, they've been tweeting a lot about him, so if you want to keep up with Brunson, I would suggest following the Ravens. They posted a really great video where they just kind of um, filmed him seeing the facilities and talking about what he was going to bring to the program, and uh, they love him. I mean, it, they're really excited not to have to love. him. That's What's not to love? Bronson Kafusi. Yeah, man. there you go. Um, so KJ Hall, who is on BYU football, tweeted out a picture of him and his dad when his dad was about his age. He says, people tell me I look like this guy all the time. I just don't get why. 
Why? And I'm, they why? look like twins. They're twins. They look like the same person. This is his dad who played for BYU in the 90s as a fullback. And yeah, same twins. hair. Um, KJ's brother, Jaron, committed to BYU as a quarterback. So we'll see. Hopefully both of them get to play together. See some holes. Yeah. Kalani, Coach Sataki, posted earlier this week that it was his wedding anniversary. And this picture was all over Twitter. You probably did see it. But he says, 14 years ago at the Provo Temple, happy to be back. I'm lucky to be with this beautiful woman. He does not look the same. I mean, he kind of mm. does, but he kind of doesn't. Yeah, for sure. It's a pretty picture, and she's gorgeous. That so. is a really cute, typical 90s wedding <clears throat> photo, though. That's fantastic. Yeah, true. Uh, so Sports Center in Canada posted this week that Sports ben Center Cahoon's, RE. Yeah, Sant <laughs> in French. Will be the Alouettes will be retiring Ben Cahoon's number on July 29th during their game. Yeah, That's huge awesome. deal. So he had a sick him. career in Canada. So it's and only now right. he's coaching our wider team. Hey, so. it's nice to have a coach whose jersey is getting retired. That's something to be excited about. Yeah. Cool picture of him, too. Okay, moving on now to our fan fest that was in San Francisco over the weekend. It was kind of rainy, but um, Cougar Nation still showed up in force. And the first tweet we have was from Cosmo and the Golden Gate Bridge. And it's a kind of cool shot. Yeah, and it just said, we're here, so... And then uh, we got a picture of Coach Satake and some other people. Jack Dumani. Yep, at Facebook. Uh Uh-huh. So they must have gotten a tour or something. Yeah, they did get a tour. It was on Elijah's Snapchat. So they're all up on that social media. Yeah. Uh, at that fan fest, they celebrated Squally Canada's birthdays. And Troy Warner tweeted out and said, Happy birthday to my guy Squall. That is a fun nickname. Um, Cougar fans, Breaks. if you haven't met this man, he'll be at the fan fest tomorrow. So he was there. Yes. Yep, so there's a picture of a fan. <laughs> I love this picture. It <clears throat> posted, Happy birthday, Squally Canada. Thanks for coming out with Jamal Williams. Made our, y'all made our day. Good luck this year. There's our backfield yeah, that we're maybe. so excited about. I know, they look good. They look big. They do look good and big. Um, Also happening at FanFest, Bryce Lake tweeted this out. I think he works with BYU Athletics. That uh, Coach Kalani was with a family that he baptized on his mission because he served in the San Francisco. I think it's the Oakland Mission is what it's called, but that's that area. And they got to go see him at that FanFest, so that's really fun. So that was the San Francisco FanFest. We have a couple coming up in Utah, in Lehigh, and West Valley. We'll give you details on that in in a bit. Yep. So Jeff Goodman at Goodman ESPN posted this week that Georgia Tech has hired yeah. Coach Reveno, who we loved, who's great at Portland. Yeah. yeah. So, so he's going from him. the WCC to the ACC. Uh, he will not be a head coach. Josh Passner, I think, is going to remain the head coach. So it looks like he'll be an assistant in some capacity, but that's a great, well, it's, it's not a great things. program. <laughs> yeah. But hey, it's the it ACC. Maybe, yes, maybe it will. <laughs> we'll see. So, good to see that he uh, found employment, though. This one's hilarious. This is funny. So, Jackson Emery <laughs> tweeted out this week that his son was playing against Zach Selyus' niece in soccer. Mm-hmm. Little kids. We're used to seeing Emery so. with Selyus, but it was Emery versus Selyus. I know. He didn't say he won, though. So Who do you think won? Uh, they probably didn't keep scoring. <laughs> yeah, they look like four, so... Yeah, let's keep going. Um, next, we have, oh, this is cute. This is Coach Rose. And this Instagram post comes from Andrew May, who is the director of operations, I think, for basketball. And it's a picture of Coach Rose and his wife. What's her name? Cheryl. Cheryl, and it's them with the practice facility, and it says that it's rolling along and that they have put so much into it. So There's a roof on it. There's a roof. I, that's so weird. It looks like a building, and they've got their hard hats, so that's a cute picture. And it looks like a ton of rain because it's been raining all week. Yeah, but. that can't help construction. Pretty cool. Um, Eric Mika, mm. he's back on the social this media. This picture. Love this. So he posted a picture. Good hanging out with my guy, Yulia uh, Childs, today. There this kid is good. Going to make a good addition to the team next year. We yeah. like to hear that, and we like to see them together. Uh-huh. Yeah. So it's, it's good to see them get in the gym together. And if you weren't already excited, and Eric is wearing number 12 on his practice jersey even, so it looks like that uh, number change is happening. Oh, yeah. Same as his Instagram. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, there you go. Speaking of Eric... So Eric also tweeted out, a weird thing about being home for a week is the fact that after tonight I'll have been to weddings three times more than I've been to church. Welcome to Utah. Welcome to, Welcome to wedding season. the age that you are. Welcome to wedding season. Just 
Everybody waited Welcome. to get married until he got back, apparently. Yeah. yeah, really important addition at those weddings. Um, also, sticking with Eric, so yes, he did just get home, and this was his probably second time attending church, I think, because he got home last week, whatever. Um, so three times more weddings, but he did give his homecoming address. So Abigail Keenan tweeted this out, said he did a great job, and that it is so fun having him back. There's his nice Italian tie, his nice Italian suit. Looks good. If you don't follow Abigail too, you should. At Abby Keenan 3 on Twitter. She is a photographer and she has amazing Mm -hmm. stuff. So Mm -hmm. So Nick Emery and his new bride, Sarah, are uh, in Mexico on their honeymoon. That beach looks delightful. He better be relaxing so that he can come back here and get back to work. Yeah, and not cut his foot on any more rocks like he did last summer. Oh, yeah. Knock on wood. Anyway. Um, Jacob Hartsock also posted this week that his fiance Sophie has been in China with BYU volleyball, mm-hmm. which we'll talk about that in a minute. But um, he just said that I'm so excited to be sealed to her on May 28th. Ooh, so a few more weeks, bad. and we'll have more wedding pictures. Yes, yep. And he's not the only one with his significant other in China. Lex is also there too. Yep. Um, we also have Kevin Nixon tweeted that uh, it's one year down and one to go for Dalton, who was on the basketball team. I'm sure they like talking to him on Sunday. Yeah. And then David Dastrup, who's Peyton Dastrup's dad, posted mm-hmm. that this was on May 3rd, that in one month my wife and I will be pl- flying to Panama to pick up Peyton from his mission. Woo! So really close for him. They're about to all be here. And then we won't be waiting on anyone else, so I'll be here. Yeah, the whole basketball team will be here. So exciting. We have a few things coming up. This past weekend, where you lost... All three of their national title matches slash oh, for games. three. Oh, it was bad. It was bad. Not a good weekend. Volleyball got swept in the title game by Ohio <sighs> State. Yeah. They kind of got served out of the gym, so they'll come back. They're young. Yep, and then both of the rugby, rugby teams, the men's and women's, lost. Um, met women's to Penn State and men's to um, Cal, which sucks because Cal is kind of our – Rival in rugby, we were there at Southfield, and that was not a good feeling. Losing on Southfield is not a thing that we usually do, but we won four consecutive national championships. So, and props to all of those teams for making it there. It's more than yeah. You can't really complain about say, being so. in a national championship game and losing. Yeah, but I mean you can't. But it, well, it's still it it <laughs> sucks, but it could be worse. Yeah. Anyway. Whatever. Uh, what, so what we have coming up, um, now obviously those sports that lost in those national championships are out of season. So baseball is one of the big things we still have going on. Um, they play today at UVU, the Parkway Collision or whatever they call it on BYU Sports Nation. Oh. <laughs> so that's today. And then Thursday they will be at San Francisco. Please get us a win. Yeah. <laughs> We've lost too much lately. Yeah. And then Fan Fest, like we mentioned earlier, mm-hmm. are this week in – yeah, West Valley on Wednesday, 6 to 9 p.m., Utah Cultural Celebration Center. Uh-huh. And then on Thursday in Lehigh. So the next day, Zango Field. Zango Field. So we'll put a link to that either in the text of the article or in the comments of our YouTube video. Yeah. Or Go to that, something. meet people, get a good story so you can come on our show yeah. and tell us. Yeah, <laughs> why I'm a fan. <laughs> Love it. Um, And then track and field. Still going on. They have a meet this last this Thursday and Friday, mm-hmm. sort of a last chance. Yep, meet Kyle Collinsworth's qualify. wife breaking all sorts of personal records and stuff. Um, and then women's golf. They qualified by like an inch, wasn't it? They did, had a really cool thing, I don't know, golf <laughs> things, to qualify for the finals in Eugene. So good Eugene for them. Oregon. Yep, they made a, an exception. They used that BYU rule about Sunday play so that yeah. they'll actually play their Luckily. Sunday round on Thursday and then just use those scores. When everybody else plays on Sunday. Okay. Who are our sponsors? This week is brought to you by Buddha, who brought the women's volleyball team some luck as they beat number two, the number two ranked team in Hong Kong. So they're over on a trip over there in Asia. Mm -hmm. Kicking butt, taking names. What's up with all these teams going on trips? I'm just getting jealous of all the travel. Like the Italy trip? Yeah. Yeah, We need to go on a Kooks on Kooks trip. Um, And our second sponsor is uh, Rumors. And we aren't talking about the Fleetwood Mac album. (coughs) Big 12. Big 12. May you always stay loyal to the white and blue. For Jess, I'm Mary. We'll see you next week.